Well, good morning, everyone. Good to see you all out. It's now it's such a kind of cold, drizzly morning. But earlier, first thing this morning, we had a beautiful sunrise. Uh, of course, it was red skies to warn, right? And then it was a beautiful rainbow to the northwest today at around six. So it was a really gorgeous morning, reminding us of God's great promises. We've got a special service today with Dylan Harris and, and Sarah and his family with us today. We're so glad. And Arlo, Mr. Arlo's here too, so we're grateful for them. Other announcements, we have Staff Pastor Parish on Tuesday, um, and we'll re, um, during service, after Dylan's presentation, we'll receive a free will offering uh, for Dylan and his ministry, and we thank Julie uh, Marks for the reception we had in between services. That was very nice. We're so grateful for that. The beautiful altar flowers are in loving memory of Tim uh, Keyhole um, from his wife, Karen, in honor of his birthday, and we have beautiful daffodils out in the foyer from Mary Percarney and Keese Farm, so another beautiful set of daffodils. We want to say happy birthday. Tomorrow is Amy Ganser's birthday and Van Patten's, and on Saturday is Ralph Bissy's and Del Hancock's, so happy birthday to them. And happy anniversary to Tom and Becky Christensen. Tom said, he goes, can't we put down that it's our 50th anniversary? And I said, oh? And he goes, yes, we dated for six years. It's their 44th anniversary. But they dated for six years, and he wants to count it. So happy anniversary to them on Thursday. (laughs) So that's all the announcements we have. Um, Next week, we'll have a regular services, and, uh, and then in, don't forget, at the end of the month, we'll have one service at 9.30 for the in-gathering, followed by, a spaghetti, followed by the in-gathering and a spaghetti dinner with the scouts, so that'll be a fun special service, too. All right. God is good, friends. All the time. And all the time. Let's stand together and sing our praise. Let your kingdom come, Father, let your will be done, and earth as in heaven, right here in my heart. Father, let your kingdom come, Father, let your will be done, and earth as in heaven, right here in my heart. Give us this day, daily bread, and forgive us, forgive us. Thank you. 
You may be seated. Let's pray together. Almighty and merciful God, our Heavenly Father, we come in before you in awe and praise of the wonderful ways that you care for us. We thank you for the rich abundance of our world and the many ways that you give good things to us. The beauty that surrounds us is all comes from the work of your hand. We thank you for the wonderful people that you surround us with who care about us and who show us the love of Christ. And we ask today especially that you will put your Holy Spirit upon us and invite us to continue to share the good news of Jesus uh, at home and at work and then through our resources around the world so that those who are lost can be found. We want to show our love for you, Lord, by loving others and serving them in Jesus' precious name. And it is in his name that we come. And all God's people say, Amen. (coughs) Well, as I said, I just want to remind you, we will be taking an offering for Dylan later. And so if you want to give to him, if you are writing a check, make it out to Dylan. Otherwise, uh, cash and just uh, make sure that it's available for Dylan to use for his ministry. But uh, during our regular offering, we know our gifts support people like Dylan because we give um, out, we tithe out to our outreach and we give 10% of our giving, our, our budget to people out and around the world. And that's a great thing. So let us be thankful for the many ways God blesses us, and with faith and trust that God's going to take our gifts and multiply them, let's give generously. Let's be in an attitude of prayer. Loving and gracious Heavenly Father, just bless all that we give and multiply it. Help each of us to trust in your love and care for us so that we can be generous. And remind us, Lord, that as we give, so we receive. And Lord, we have received so much from your hands. And help us to to just give like you give, knowing in the abundance that you'll provide. We thank you, Lord, and praise you in Jesus' precious name. And all God's people say, Amen. Amen. Will the ushers please come forward? And don't forget, if you have a prayer request to send up here, to hand it to an usher and fill out your attendance registers.
As we come to our time of joys and concerns, um, we are thankful for the healings that folks have received. Sharon Ritchie is here at the Ark, recovering from her ankle, uh, broken ankle, and I'll see, we will have services there at two o'clock today, and so I'll see her then and uh, check on her then too, but uh, Dave Taylor saw her and she is doing all right. We want to keep... Um, Linda Deutscher in our prayer, she has pneumonia and was in the hospital uh, this week until yesterday. We also want to pray for Randall Ferris, who's now down at the emergency room. He's been sick since Thursday also, and he's lost uh, weight because he hasn't been able to eat. So they're at Morris at the emergency room. So please keep Randall and his family in your prayers. We also want to keep Mike Coakley uh, Joe Coakley's brother in your prayers, he's having kidney surgery to remove one of his kidneys for possible cancer. Um, we want to keep Anita Pollock in our prayers as she will have kidney surgery on the 11th, on the 18th uh, for her uh, kidney cancer. 
We also want to uh, thank God that Mary Picarney's eye surgery went so well and continue prayers for healing for her. Of course, please keep all our travelers in our prayers and others who are battling cancer and other concerns that you have upon your hearts and minds. So let's take all these and our unspoken concerns before God at this time. We'll go together first silently and individually. Um, I'll conclude us with a pastoral prayer, and then we'll all join together in the Lord's Prayer. Let's pray together. Loving and gracious Heavenly Father, we are so thankful for this day to gather together and to worship you. We're mindful of the many who aren't able to be with us today that have different events and activities or illness, as we've heard. And we just pray your special anointing rest on each of us, that you draw us closer to you and to one another, that you remind us of how big this world is and through our outreach and ministries like Dylan and his family do, that how small it is and how connected we are to others and how alike we are. And Lord, just help us then to be bold and be willing to share the good news of your love. There are many who are lost and searching, and we just pray right now, Lord, that you guide them and bless them, that you heal them. And Lord, we challenged ourselves uh, to be in this great 50 days of uh, Easter to be praying for a person that we might struggled with, including our, maybe it's ourselves. And Lord, I just lift those people up to you right now for healing and anointing and restoration. Because that's your business, Lord, to restore relationships, to lift up the brokenhearted, to set the captive free. And often we're captive to bitterness and to... To, to those kinds of sufferings that bind us, and we just want to be set free, Lord. But we pray for any who are battling addictions in our lives, that you help them to take a step forward and to be free from that. We pray for their families and all caregivers, Lord, that you strengthen them and encourage them today. And we ask, Lord, that you just continue to bless our families, help us to raise these little sweet ones up and to know your love and your power encourage their families. They're doing such a great job, and we're so grateful to have them in our church and in our lives, and we just pray your anointing rest on them this week. We ask, Lord, that you just uh, be with the lonely and, and the brokenhearted, and that you just comfort them and guide us to reach out. Lord, if there are people that we need to make contact with this week, just bring them to our minds and, and help us to be loving and gracious. And Lord, we just pray for all those battling cancer, that today may be a day of victory for them. We pray for those who are facing upcoming surgeries. We think of Anita, but we especially this week think of uh, Joe's brother, Mike, and we pray for his healing and that everything may go well for him. And right now, we especially lift up Randall. We pray that you give his doctors powerful discernment, that you help Randall to feel better and guide them on their care of him and be with Judy and, and Lisa and his family and give them peace. And Lord, just, just protect and heal Randall. He does so much good for your kingdom. And we just pray that you just bless him and, and provide for him. And Lord, we are just asking that you bless any others that we're naming in our hearts, any who have a hard battle, that you just guide them and, and help them to feel your presence and feel your power and just bring great deliverance upon your people, Lord. And Lord, we do pray for um, all our service personnel who do our emergency service, police, and then our military, that you just protect them and guide their and protect their families and encourage them. We thank you for this wonderful country we live in, and we thank you that, that we can travel safely, and we just pray for others around the world who don't have that privilege, and that you just help our country to be a leader, to work for peace, and we especially pray for peace in the Middle East and, and especially in Jerusalem. Lord, help us to uh, lift up your name so that people who walk in darkness can see the light of your love. 
And we ask all these things and our unspoken concerns we give all to you, Lord, through the power of your Holy Spirit and in the precious name of your Son, Jesus. And we continue now in our time of prayer, praying as Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who've trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Well, friends, uh, Dylan is with us. We're going to start with uh, the scripture uh, from Matthew 28. It's called the Great Commission. Dylan will have a few scriptures to share with us, too. But as is our tradition, let's share God's word together. Uh, Jesus, um, Jesus came and told his disciples, I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you. And be sure of this, I am with you always, even to the ends of the age. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to our great God. Well, it is with joy that we welcome uh, Dylan and his wife, Sarah, and Arlo, their son, uh, to forward uh, and to give us our message today and to share his wonderful ministry. <laughs> welcome, Dylan, <laughs> again. Good morning. Good morning. So this is my wife, Sarah, and our 14-month-old, Arlo. And they're not going to stay up here. They're going to probably go play in the nursery. But um, Arlo and Sarah are both also happy to be here. So, yeah. yeah. Welcome. Yes, hello, Arlo. Yes, we're clapping. That's right. Arlo's got our system down. He's encouraging you to show them some love. <laughs> so glad Sarah is such an important part of their ministry yeah. and outreach. <clears throat> yeah, bye. <laughs> He's a little sweetie. <laughs> Arlo is uh, pretty much how we meet people overseas. <clears throat> he makes it really easy. He's, yeah. just, he's happy to see everybody. <laughs> well, thank you for letting me come and get to share. I'm so glad to be here. Um, Dave's not in the service, but Dave and Rosie Miller like contacted me about coming, and it was a no-brainer. I was so excited to get to come share about what God's doing in our lives and what he has done. Um, we've been kind of all over the world in the past four years, and I'll share more on that. But I want to share some scripture that really uh, has, it, I feel like it conveys what really has kept us overseas and has sustained us. And so um, really why we moved overseas was Matthew 28, 18 through 20, the Great Commission, like that, that desire to go. Um, but what has sustained us is the hope, um, which we'll read in Romans 15, 13, which says, I pray that God, the source of hope, will fill you completely with joy and peace because you trust in him. Then you will overflow with confident hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. And so that passage alone is like, yeah, our hope is in, in, Jesus, in Jesus and in God. And like that is, that is through all the craziness what keeps us, keeps us overseas uh, despite kind of all the ups and downs. But then the next verse uh, is Psalm 67 or the next chapter, uh, Psalm 67, which uh, there's a really great book called Let the Nations Be Glad that um, really influenced my desire to go overseas. Uh, and it, the name comes from this, this, this chapter. And so it says, may God be merciful and bless us. May his face smile with favor on us. Um, may your ways be known throughout the earth, your saving power among people everywhere. May the nations praise you, O oh God. Yes, may all the nations praise you. Let the whole world sing for joy because you govern the nations with justice and guide the people of the whole world. May the nations praise you, O God. Yes, may all the nations praise you. Then the earth will yield its harvest and God, our God, will richly bless us. Yes, God will bless us and people all over the world will fear him. And so 
those for us are kind of rallying cries, like the battle cry. Um, <clears throat> it's why we wanted to live overseas, is seeing that people will know who God is, but there needs to be people who tell them. And then it's like how we've stayed is just that, that hope and that trust that, that God is good and he's a loving father. And so with that, I'll share a little bit about kind of how we got overseas, but then what it's looked like. We, to preface, most people's life overseas, uh, the first few years are not as kind of crazy and moving all around like how ours has been, um, but we just happened to move to Lebanon, a pretty crazy country. But um, we both, uh, so my wife, Sarah, she's from, she's from Dallas. Uh, we met in Lubbock, Texas, where Texas Tech is. And we, on our first date, I was just very clear, hey, I wanna live overseas. I really wanna give my life to missions. Uh, if you don't want to, we can end the date now. And she, <laughs> and she was like, yeah. no, yeah. She very quickly was like, no, I'm, I'm in. I wanna do that. And so that was just really sweet. So from the beginning, our relationship was all about how can we get overseas? Um, and initially, we really thought we would move to Thailand. We did two short-term trips that we led to Thailand, and we fell in love with it. And it's really funny, Sarah, for the longest time, she'd be like, yeah, I'm just really open-handed with where like, we can move overseas. But if you like talk to her now, she's like, I said I was open-handed, but it really I meant Thailand. Um, but in kind of a strange twist, whenever we were looking to move overseas, uh, none of the choices were Thailand. Um, they were all in the Middle East, and we felt, hey, God still needs to be known. Like, Jesus still needs to be known and exalted in the Middle East. We could see ourselves living there. And so in 2020, in the, in the height of COVID, and right after the Beirut port exploded, um, we moved in September of 2020 to Beirut, which this is a picture that Sarah took from the plane as we were coming to Beirut one day. And yeah, now you can see there's an airline that was like, hey, can we use this photo? There's a Le Lebanese Middle Eastern restaurant in Canada that asked if they could use it. But it, it's just a great picture of the city. Um, yeah, Beirut was kind of interesting. We moved there a month after the port exploded, but then uh, really joined the team hoping to be a part of this kind of two-year program that allowed us to really have a soft landing space uh, in order to then be overseas longer, healthier, um, and really uh, to thrive, which is a word that we use often overseas is that we want to thrive and we want to see others thrive. Well, in Beirut, uh, we found out right after we moved there at our team orientation, hey, in six months, we're actually moving to the city called Zahle. Um, Zahle is very different. It's much smaller. It's out in the valley. It, it's actually, I didn't mention this last service, it's the Catholic capital of the Middle East, um, which is just this really strange just dichotomy because all around it is Muslims and then you're in this Catholic capital. Um, but what's, what's really cool is while we were out there, we got to just see a lot of ministry happen, a lot of um, people were coming to faith. Um, there was this, yeah, this evangelical kind of movement um, happening on this piece of land called the land. Um, in Arabic, it was El uh, Urd, which just means the land. Um, and it was just really cool. These people started praying uh, that God would save many Lebanese people because they, most people were very culturally Christian and they didn't follow Jesus. And they just started praying. Uh, and a year later, we show up and they're like, we were six last year and now we're 60. And then by the time we left uh, Lebanon, about four months after we, we first visited, they were over 100. And so it was just this really cool like, movement that was really through prayer. And it was so cool. We, we really weren't a part of it because we didn't speak enough Arabic to help. But in Lebanon, most people speak English. And so eventually they were like, hey, will you help us disciple people? We have truly too many people coming to faith to kind of handle it all. Uh, and what kind of stinks is that we didn't get to uh, actually begin that process because we ended up having to evacuate. Um, Lebanon, uh, around this time, despite looking beautiful, uh, actually, when this picture was taken, uh, everybody was kind of on a lockdown because uh, there was no gasoline. And so all the gas stations were closed and there was no consistent electricity. 
And so we had some visitors and we were like, well, we kind of have to show them around. We can't just sit in the dark at our apartment while they're here. Um, so yeah, Lebanon uh, really began to fall apart. The currency was devalued at a huge rate. Um, yeah, when we moved there, it was already inflated and then it, it, it tripled. Uh, and by the time we left it like 100 times uh, devalued. And so it was just kind of this crazy place that was not a soft landing. And so because of that, our team evacuated and we went, we went to Barcelona um, in Spain where our church and our team kind of had a friend church uh, that had a field office. Um, and the field office there was basically just there as needed if people in the Middle East kind of need to get out or people in other, North Africa needed to get out and just breathe. And so we ended up leaving, um, which in retrospect, we probably stayed a little too long. Uh, it was hard to even get medicine. Sarah at the time had like a double ear infection and there was not any medication for her. And so, yeah, Lebanon was tough, but we now look back on it really fondly. Um, so we ended up in Barcelona. From Barcelona, our team made the decision to move to Amman, Jordan. And so Amman, Jordan is very different. It's much more conservative. It's the desert. Um, we still love it. We still love Jordan. But that's actually where Arlo was born. Um, in Jordan, uh, as we made the move, our team went from five liters. Um, we just right before the move went down to three liters. And with the move, our main team leader was like, hey, we're actually not gonna make the move due to unhealth. So not only were we moving countries, we'd already evacuated one, and we we're still kind of like right at a year overseas. Uh, we also experienced a lot of unhealth with, with team leaders. And so this is kind of where it's really sweet. We see God, work, we saw God working. It was hard at the time to acknowledge it because it was just hard times. But we saw that God was giving us a heart for developing leaders, um, developing healthy leaders and developing healthy rhythms and sustainability overseas. Because most people we met were burning out left and right. Like our, yeah, all five of the team leaders that we originally had are now actually back home, um, just due to burnout. And that's preventable. Um, and so with the move, with one leader left and we had there was like 30 people in kind of the training. Um, they just said, hey, we don't actually have enough resources to kind of get you through doing the training that you want to do. We just kind of need to get you through and get onto the next group. And we we're like, well, we're going to go find a team that uh, really can develop us the way we wanted to be developed. And so we ended up joining a team in Jordan that was able to do that. Um, and the goal of that team was to only exist for nine months and kind of help everybody find what's next. And in kind of a strange twist, our first meeting, everybody that we were teaming with already had their next thing. <laughs> we're like, well, we don't have our next thing. Uh, we have no idea what we're gonna do. We just know that we wanna be on a healthy team for a bit. But Sarah and I kind of sat down and we, write, we wrote down a bunch of desires that we felt like the Lord had put on our heart and really had put on our heart before we even moved overseas. Um, but kind of the main desire was to care for people overseas because that had kind of come about with our time in Lebanon. It's something that we didn't think we ever would say, be like, oh yeah, we, we're care people. But it kind of really stood out that that was needed. And so uh, we wrote all these things down in September of, I guess that was 2022. Um, and by December, we'd actually been invited out to Chiang Mai, uh, Thailand, where we now live by my old boss at the church that I worked at in Texas and my now current boss and team leader and just a really good friend and mentor, um, his name's Spencer. And Spencer invited us out to this training to be what are called care coaches, basically mentors for people who are overseas. Um, and we, we've lived enough life overseas to qualify for that is basically how that went. But we were just super, super, um, yeah, just kind of unsure of what to do next uh, in terms of our time overseas. But we knew that we wanted to be care coaches and we thought we wanted to stay in Jordan. And so we went out to Chiang Mai, Thailand in December of 2022. And Sarah was eight months pregnant, and, which was already crazy enough. But while we were there, uh, he asked if we would consider uh, this role that involved being a care coach, um, developing a kind of leadership training, um, 
really like all these kind of job roles that I had written down. And I was like, well, this is literally the perfect job description. And he was like, well, you have to do it in Chiang Mai. Like, Oof, that's tough. That's not the Arab world. That's not Arabic speaking, which is what we speak. Uh, but after, yeah, going, I went back to the guest house that we were staying at, and I, I told Sarah, I was like, hey, this is kind of what Spencer laid out. It's perfect job description. But I don't know. She's like, yeah, we're not doing it. She's like, that's all the way across the world. We've already moved enough. It's a whole different language. Like, we already speak relatively decent Arabic. Arabic's really hard. It takes a while. But it was like, we... I don't want to learn another language. I don't want to learn a language that's not Arabic. But we were like, okay, benefit of the doubt, we'll pray about it, we'll talk to our, our friends, our mentors, uh, and we'll let you know. And so we, we go back to Jordan and we start sharing with everybody and they're all like, that's the perfect job for you. Like, why are you hesitating? It's a no-brainer. It's like, yeah, but it's in Thailand. It's, it seems exactly like what you guys should be doing. So, in a step of faith and in kind of craziness, uh, when Arlo was 10 weeks old, we moved to Chiang Mai, and Chiang Mai is beautiful. Uh, we really do love it. Um, we are getting to work on leadership development, and we're currently building it out, um, what it'll look like, kind of healthy rhythms. Um, we are getting to do care coaching. We're even getting to kind of do some like in-country care for people, um, because that's just become something that we are very strong, strongly passionate about. Um, our local, yeah, just kind of local relationships are hopefully gonna feed into our like leadership development ministry. But really like, yeah, the, the theme throughout our time overseas has just been like God sustaining us and giving us, he, him being the hope that keeps us overseas. Um, because as I just kind of rambled on about our time overseas, it's, it's been a little bit crazy. Um, most people, when they move overseas, it's like, hey, I'm going to go live in this country. And praise God, they get to stay there for a long time. Um, or they move after 10 years or five years, uh, not move four times in four years. Um, but we are able to look back on it, really because of verses like Romans 15, 13, and um, really the verses that like got us overseas, like Matthew 28, it helps us see like why we're there and why everything that's kind of happened has happened. Because I'll never forget, we had only been overseas like two and a half years when we went to that care coach training. And we're sitting in the room and all of our peers in the room were like eight years, nine years, six years overseas. And we're like, are we, are we supposed to be here? Like we've barely been overseas. And everybody kind of shares their like stories of like why they're there. And we share our story and everybody's like, wow, that's a lot. We're like, oh, okay, I guess we're supposed to be here. <laughs> it's like, okay, like God used all that for good. Um, and so really that, that, that hope, of, hope of Jesus, like we cling to that, like that keeps us there. And so just encourage you guys, like do that here. Um, do that here. You can do that in Dwight. You can do that in Illinois. Um, you can do that in the U.S. Um, the Great Commission, like isn't just to send people overseas. Like, while Psalm 67 is about all the nations knowing him, like, one of the sweet things is, is that people from all nations are actually here in the U.S. And so, um, just to encourage you guys, like, you can do it here. Um, we're not, yeah, we're not superstar Christians because we're overseas, but we're just a little bit crazy enough to be overseas. Um, but, no, that's, that's what I have, that um, we, we're, we're hoping to be in Thailand a long time. We love it there. We see what God is doing. He's doing a amazing things amongst uh, just people in Thailand. I say people because Thai people are more hesitant to believing in Jesus, um, but there's a lot of people um, from different backgrounds who are in Thailand who are coming to faith, and it's like, man, God is doing a lot there, and so we hope to be there a long time. Um, we also uh, hopefully won't be strangers and not be back or not avoid coming back for a long time, but uh, we have to come back every three, four years, so hopefully in a few years we can give a really good update. But we also will have a, there's a sign up um, out behind Joe on the little podium out there that is for our newsletter. We send out weekly updates, and that's a little much for some people. You can change it to monthly. But we just like to really give a glimpse into what life overseas is like, that we are just normal people. Um, we 
sometimes go to the grocery store and that's all we do that day because it's a really tough time going to the grocery store sometimes. Uh, or you, you try to go to one grocery store and you end up at five because it's hard to find what you want. But we love, we love getting to share about what we're doing, what God's doing. And so if you're, if you're interested, sign up back there. But yeah, let me pray for us and then that's it. Father, just thank you. Thank you for this church. Thank you for the fact that you bind um, yeah, all your churches together, that the hope of Jesus is what, um, yeah, what unifies us all, that we're all brothers and sisters in Christ. And Lord, I just pray that yeah, you would help us to be missional where each of us are, that you would um, work in Dwight, that you would work in, in, in the U.S., that you would work in Illinois, you would work in Thailand and all across the world, Lord, that your name would just be exalted um, amongst all the nations. So Lord, I just pray that you would help each of us in this room to, to know you and to fear you in a way that, that means that we can't help but share, share you. We can't help but share our love of you. And Lord, I just pray that you would give us, that you'd just give us that hope that does sustain us and, and causes us to, to like just be missional where we are. So, Lord, I just thank you. Thank you for this opportunity. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Dylan, some love. Thank you, Dylan. Thank you so much. And, and uh, that's, Dylan's a good example that you just follow God's lead, and you don't know where he's going to take us. And, again, it starts at home and uh, goes out from there. Well, we are going to take an offering for Dylan right now. And so um, I hope that you give generously to his work and ministry and know that that's planting seeds all around the world. Thailand is a big area of lots of different um, expats and folks coming from all over the world and in addition to the local people. So it's a wonderful ministry opportunity. All right, well, let's uh, invite our ushers to come forward. And Brandon's going to play a little music for us during this time. Let's be in an attitude of prayer again. <clears throat> loving and gracious God, just accept these gifts that will be given for Dylan's work and Sarah's and their family. Just bless them and multiply these gifts and to go out into the world to help people to meet you and know your love for them in Jesus. And Lord, empower us. Just pour your Holy Spirit on each of us that we are more willing to share that in the different ways you call us. And sometimes it's a simple conversation. Uh, sometimes it's an invitation to an activity at church, or, or sometimes it's just an encouraging word and a hope that we offer, or an invitation to pray with someone. Lord, help us to just be serious about our faith and, and to listen also to what Dylan says about balance and, and healthiness. We all need that so much, especially in our culture, so that we can thrive. That's the kind of people that you want us to be, people who have an abundant life and a life that touches many others. So bless these gifts to do just that. We ask this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. All right, Brandon, go ahead, and we'll invite our ushers to come forward.
that rugged cross my salvation where your blood poured out over me now my soul cries out hallelujah praise and honor unto thee my salvation where your love poured out over me now my soul cries out hallelujah praise and honor unto thee Now we will share in communion together. We have individual cups out in the foyer if that's the way you would choose to partake. But how we normally partake is that we invite everyone to come down the center aisle. We have our servers and they can come forward and start getting things ready. Um, that um, will be down here with the bread. I will have the um, gluten-free bread in the common cup with me where you can dip and take in tinction, or you can uh, stop at the rail, either kneel or stand as you are able, and partake that way. As United Methodists, we practice what's called open communion, which means the table is the Lord's and all are invited to partake. So let's prepare our hearts for this time of celebration. I also will have gluten-free bread for any who might need it. Well, friends, on the night in which Jesus gave himself up for us, he took bread, he gave thanks to the Father for it, he broke the bread, he gave it to his disciples, and he said, take and eat of this, all of you, for this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after they'd supped, he took the cup, and he gave thanks to the Father for it, and he gave this to his disciples, and he said, take and drink of this, all of you, for this cup is the new covenant in my blood poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we are proclaiming the Lord's death and resurrection until he comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Let us pray together. Loving and gracious Heavenly Father, just pour your Holy Spirit upon these gifts of bread and juice. Maybe they're a wafer from our, our individual cup, a cracker at home, or our bread, or whatever ways that we partake today, and of the cup of the same way. Pour out your spirit upon us that we may then be filled and nourished and strengthened, that we can go forth as the body of Christ and share the good news of your love for us in Jesus. We ask, O oh Lord, that you make us one with each other and one with you in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Truly, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. We praise you and the Holy Spirit and your Son, Jesus, our Lord and Savior, coming always to you through him. And all God's people say, Amen. Well, we'll invite you forward now uh, to come as you are ready.
great God who gives us the victory over all things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, let's stand together as we prepare to depart and sing our closing praise, The Great I Am. benediction friends may the grace of our lord jesus christ may the love of god our heavenly father and the communion and fellowship of the holy spirit be with you all this day and always as you go forth live the truth of god's love for you and share that truth with this broken and hurting world because our god is with us every step of the way that is our promise that is our hope that is our life. Amen. 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 I speak the name of Jesus over you in your hurting.